ringing sounds of friendship between two of the world's oldest civilizations. The Chinese military band playing India's national anthem to honor Indian Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari as he inspected the Guard of Honor in the presence of his Chinese counterpart Li Yunchao at the Great Hall of People of China. Vice President Hamad Ansari arrived in China for a five-day visit at an invitation he received last year to commemorate the 60th anniversary of Panchin. Also part of the visit were discussions on a wide range of bilateral issues. Hamad Ansari was accompanied by his wife Salman Ansari, Commerce and Industry Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, Members of Parliament Hukum Naran Yadav, Bal Chandra Mungekar, KC Thyagi and P. Rajiv. And a high-level delegation were also part of the entourage. The visit was significant since it was the first one by any Indian leader to China after the NDA government took over. It was also the first one by any Indian vice president since 1994. There were high expectations from the visit, something the vice president himself acknowledged when he informed that the bilateral agenda was discussed extensively in the spirit of constructive atmosphere. Our discussions were friendly, cordial and frank. We discussed all items on the bilateral agenda. We conveyed our views. We put it across to them that a relationship with China has been a consistent item of policy of governments of India and continues to be an important item in the priorities of the new government. It was said to me again and again that China regards a relationship, a vibrant relationship with India as a critical element in their policy. Hamid Ansari expressed concerns about some of the sticking points in the relationship, especially the trade imbalance that in recent years is becoming increasingly tilted in favour of China. Our trade is very big, but there is such an imbalance that it can't go this way. Now there are two ways. Either it is that we are going to be एक्सपोर्ट बढ़ाएं या वो अपना इन्वेस्टमेंट हमारे देश में बढ़ाएं तो उनका रिस्पांस जो था वो ठीक था कुछ चीजें हैं जिस पे कि वो स्टडी करना चाहते हैं कॉम्प्लिकेटेड सब्जेक्ट है टेक्निकल सब्जेक्ट है इस पे एक्सपर्ट लेवल पे बातें होंगी अलोंग विथ ट्रेड एंड इन्वेस्टमेंट इश्यूज बॉर्डर एरिया डिस्प्यूट एंड स्कर्मिश फाउंड इक्वल रेजिडेंस the Vice President took a pragmatic view, indicating that this has always been a long-drawn and time-consuming issue. Ansari informed newspersons that the two countries had worked out a framework to resolve the contentious issues. 
2003 से वाजपेयी जी की सरकार ने एक एग्रीमेंट साइन किया था और फिर बाद में डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह की गवर्नमेंट ने उसको एलेबोरेट किया था कि एक सेट ऑफ प्रिंसिपल्स देखिए जब झगड़ा है और मुझ में आप में बात हो रही है झगड़ा तय करने की तो पहला सवाल ये होता है कि भाई किस बेसिस पे तय होगा तो उसके लिए दोनों सरकारों ने एक फ्रेमवर्क बनाया है कि किस फ्रेमवर्क में ये चीज तय होगी इसके लिए दोनों सरकारों के स्पेशल रिप्रेजेंटेटिव है जो के बराबर मिलते हैं और वो बात धीरे धीरे आगे बढ़ रही है इट वॉज अ मेशर ऑफ द इम्पोर्टेंस दैट बोथ साइड अकॉर्ड टू ईच अदर दैट बेरली विद इन मंथ ऑफ न्यू नरेंद्र मोदी गवर्नमेंट टेकिंग चार्ज बीजिंग एंड न्यू डेली हैव एक्सचेंज इम्पोर्टेंट विजिट As the second highest in India's official hierarchy, the Vice President presided over the launch of India-China Year of Friendly Exchanges in New Delhi on February 11th. They culminated in the celebrations to mark 60 years of Panchfield in Beijing on June 28. India and China signed the Panchfield Agreement in April 1954. It became the model for cooperation for the two Asian giants. who gained independence in 1947 and 1949 The Panchil Agreement is based on five principles mutual respect for sovereignty and territorial integrity mutual non-aggression non-interference in each other's internal affairs equality and mutual benefit and peaceful coexistence In the Great Hall of People, Vice President Mohammad Hamid Ansari took part in the anniversary celebrations in the presence of Myanmar President Hu Thanh Sen and Chinese President Xi Jinping. Also present were Chinese Premier Li Keqiang, top legislator Zhang Dujiang, and top political adviser Yu Jiangsheng. Delivering the keynote address, Chinese President Xi Jinping reiterated the virtues of good neighborly relations as envisaged by Panchi. He also said no country should monopolize international affairs. China-Myanmar two countries have signed the Panchfield Agreement and the Mutual Respect for Sovereignty and Territorial Integrity. This is the first Asian Giants' first peaceful agreement. Just gathering, I convey my best wishes to him. Addressing an audience of over 700 people, Vice President Ansari recalled that India's first Prime Minister. Jawaharlal Nehru referred to Lord Buddha's use of Panchil as a moral concept. He said the pursuit of world peace is a fundamental tenet of India's foreign policy. We need a new paradigm for global action. Our destinies are intertwined. Our quest is should be for a framework in which opportunities and challenges for the betterment of our societies coexist in this endeavor panchil can act as a catalyst to help us better coordinate our efforts the vice president also said india china myanmar relations are rooted in shared historical ethnic cultural and religious ties he stressed that it was the duty of these three countries to revitalize their friendly relations and to promote cooperation India China and Myanmar are bound by age old linkages and geography we may be at different stages of development but we can learn from each other's national experiences in our respective bilateral relations our common interests far outweigh our differences on the way forward we have to build on our convergences and narrow down the differences panchil can help us exploit this potential for cooperation Myanmar president Hu Thanh Sen also expressed confidence that the event would bring closer cooperation between Myanmar China and India Tu chin ga la ga lu nai ya ga za nan gan yue 
Pim Dalare Sanagaro. See why you can do to remove Yashi, be a muda chocha anagu. Apart from the Panchil celebrations, discussions on bilateral trade were high on the agenda. Commerce and Industry Minister Nirmala Sitaraman met her Chinese counterpart Gao Han Chen on declining bilateral trade, mounting trade deficit, and wavering Chinese commitments to step up FDI in India. India and China signed three landmark pacts in the presence of Vice President Ansari and his Chinese counterpart Li Yun Chao. The Memorandum of Understanding on Industrial Parks was signed by Indian Foreign Secretary Sujata Singh and Chinese Vice Minister, Ministry of Commerce, Gao Yen. The MOU aims at attracting Chinese investments in India and provides an enabling framework for Chinese companies to invest in industrial parks and zones. Authorized by Ambassador of India to China, Ashok E. Kant and Chinese Vice Minister, Ministry of Water Resources, the other agreement envisions implementation plan for information exchange on Brahmaputra River in flood season. The third agreement was endorsed by Indian Ambassador and Feng Jun, Executive Vice President of China Executive Leadership Academy for capacity building of public officials. India underscored the need to create a more conducive environment for investment, especially in sectors where the Chinese have the better advantage. The Chinese investment is seen as a vital tool to contain the escalating trade deficit for India, the main reason for which is the restrictive Chinese regulatory systems that discourage Indian exports in sectors like information technology and pharmaceuticals that are both India's strengths. India and China are expecting bilateral trade to touch $100 billion by next year, up from the current $65.5 billion. There is a big trade imbalance at the moment. We hope to correct the imbalance by getting greater market access into China and also inviting China to invest in India. So that imbalance which has been prevailed, uh, prevailing in the last few years and which is huge, we certainly want the Chinese to look at investing in India or giving us greater market access. The present level of trade imbalance is not sustainable. So we're working to see how we can uh, address this aspect of large trade deficit. How can we diversify and expand uh, economic commercial engagement between our two countries? How do we ensure uh, better access for Indian products which are competitive to Chinese market. However, Foreign Secretary Sujata Singh allayed the fears of Indian manufacturers facing the heat of cheap Chinese imports. She reiterated that competitive advantage would be the foothold of strengthened Indo-Sino bilateral trade ties. जब फॉरेन इन्वेस्टमेंट को इनवाइट करते हैं इंडिया में तो कुछ कारण के लिए इनवाइट करते हैं या कुछ टेक्नोलॉजी ले आ रहे हैं या हमारे मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर को स्ट्रेंथन कर रहे हैं तो हम सोचते हैं कि चाइनीज इन्वेस्टमेंट भी यही एडवांटेजेस के साथ आएगा The Vice President also met the Indian diaspora at a reception organized by the Indian Ambassador. He congratulated the expatriate's sense of purpose while reiterating that the country can choose its friends but not its neighbors. Well, you can choose friends, you cannot choose neighbors. China and India are neighbors, have been neighbors since the beginning of time and will continue to be neighbors as far as one can see. So, 
there are only two ways of living with neighbors. There is a wise way and there is an unwise way. I think we in India are very clear about it. We opt for the wise way. In a dinner reception organized by the Ambassador of India in China for the Vice President of India, Mr. Mohammed Hamid Ansari interacted with the people of Indian diaspora. He congratulated them for being successful and purposeful for Chinese society. Both Hamid Ansari and the Chinese Vice President jointly released an encyclopedia of India-China cultural contacts. The encyclopedia in English and Chinese versions encapsulates the rich history of exchanges between the two countries. The monumental work was put together by a joint compilation committee that had officials and scholars from both India and China. Hamid Ansari also delivered an instructive speech at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Scholars of China's premier think tank in Beijing candidly interacted with the Vice President on the occasion. India-China relations are at a stage where with the active efforts of all these stakeholders, we can take them to a new level. Further promoting our ties with China is one of the priorities of India's foreign policy and there is a consensus across the political spectrum on this issue. After the hectic official meetings, an essential feature of the visit was the sightseeing. At Xi'an, the first stopover for the Vice President in the Shangxi province, Hamid Ansari visited the famous Terracotta Warriors Museum. Two thousand years ago, sculptures of warriors, horses and chariots were buried here in Emperor Qin's mausoleum to protect and accompany him into his next life. In Xi'an, Vice President Ansari also visited the Great Mosque. His message in the visitor's book read, and I quote, The Great Mosque in Xi'an has made a deep impression on me as it reflects the syncretic religious and architectural heritage of Shangxi province. The mosque is well preserved, reflecting the endurance of its rich tradition into present-day China. I am grateful to have had the occasion to experience this spiritual oasis in the heart of Xi'an. I thank Imam Muhammad Yunus for graciously taking me around. Next on the tour was the Giant Wild Goose Pagoda in Xi'an. The pagoda was built to hold sutras and figurines of Buddha that were brought to China from India by the Buddhist translator and traveller Hyun San. In the Beijing leg of visit, the Vice President visited the Great Wall of China. 
Located 70 kilometers from the country's capital, it is a series of fortifications. It was built across the northern borders of China to protect the empire against Mongolian intrusions and military incursions by various warlike forces. The Vice President also saw the 700-year-old forbidden city in Beijing, the Chinese Imperial Palace, from the Ming Dynasty to the end of the Qing Dynasty. All through the Vice President's visit, the hospitality of the Chinese hosts was immaculate. Traffic was halted in both Xi'an and Beijing for the Vice President's cavalcade to have an uninterrupted drive to his hotel. In Xi'an, this was an exceptional gesture, considering that this was not done even for their top Chinese leadership. Not surprisingly, it turned out to be a novelty for the local people in Xi'an who spontaneously lined up to watch the cavalcade. The dinner hosted for the Vice President was no less eclectic. Vice President Hamad Ansari's visit to China is a prelude to some important interactions between the leaderships of the two countries. The most important one is the visit by President Xi to India later this year. But before that, Xi and Prime Minister Modi are likely to have one-on-one -on -one meeting on the sidelines of the BRICS summit in Brazil next month. Indeed, some very busy and quite fruitful times are beckoning for China and India. In front lies the ocean. Into that ocean of peace, my friends, let us launch our boats. As the official visit of the Vice President of India, Mohammad Hamid Ansari, to China came to a close, expectations are riding high that India and China would enter a new era of cooperation in economic, strategic and cultural realm. The five principles of Panchayat also found a renewed vigour and shall be instrumental to the states in conducting diplomacy. From China, with camera persons Dushwanta and Suresh and inputs from Sanjay Kumar, Kriti Mishra for Rajasabha Television.